Right. Did you really, did you I, was doing, I was doing mostly Senate races, um, and uh, so I was. I went to Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio, Montana, Pennsylvania. So the weather wasn't all, bad though. That was great. Yeah, it was phenomenal. Could have been horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on your win as well. Thank you. Um, so uh, you good? Uh, tell me about your expectations. You have a narrow majority here in the House once again. We saw all sorts of problems in this Congress with a narrow majority. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned that it could happen again? Well, I think um, there's a clear point that needs to be made is uh, President Trump won the popular vote. Uh, I think the votes are still being counted, but it's over four million ahead of Kamala Harris. Um, he also swept the Electoral College, 312 votes in the Electoral College. That is a massive victory. Um, and that didn't transfer over to House races, and it should have. And I think it's I think it's a pretty uh, strong point that the House needs to recognize, our Republican conference needs to recognize that we should be, we should have so many seats that we aren't worried about how many we have to work with. We should have a major majority, a super majority, but we don't. And we don't have that, um, I think, is based on the performance of this Congress. Um, this Congress has, has had a lot of failures in the eyes of our voters, in the eyes of the American people. The American people um, gave a mandate last Tuesday of the, the types of policies they want, the agenda that they want, and that's President Trump's policies that he laid out on the campaign. The MAGA agenda is what they approved of, um, and that, that was not the agenda that was focused on and this uh, majority of Republicans. And you, and I think that's. I think that is a clear point that has to be recognized. Is, is Speaker Johnson to blame for that? Yes, his leadership. Um, unfortunately, uh, he passed fully passed the Biden Harris uh, agenda. He he reauthorized FISA, uh, warrantless spying on Americans, and gave Ukraine sixty billion dollars, which and the American people are against that war. They just want to stop funding it. And um, that, those things should not have happened. Those are the failures that the American people spoke out against on Tuesday. And that's why we're struggling. We have the majority, thankfully. Thankfully, the American people have given us the majority. But it's razor thin, which makes it difficult. Um, and we should be going into a trifecta with no difficulties whatsoever. So I think those are issues that must be worked out within our conference. And I hope that's going to happen over the next couple of days. Could you support him for speaker? These are, I want to hear what he has to say to our conference. Um, and, and we're hearing rumors that there may be a challenge. So this is, I'm looking forward to getting in the conference and working out this, these issues. Mm -hmm. um, and it can't be just going in the conference and cheerleading of, we won the majority, but not recognizing, no guys, President Trump drug us across the finish line. That it, we didn't win the majority, President Trump won us the majority based on his agenda. And, and people voting down ballot because of President Trump. So, because I, I spoke to Johnson today, and he told me that he doesn't think he's going to have any problems becoming speaker. That he thinks that the votes will be there at the end of the day. Is that a, you think that's a fair assessment? Yeah, I think it's a fair assessment, but there has to be a change. You can't go from completely supporting the Democrat agenda easily to how, how do you swing over and all of a sudden you're supporting President Trump's agenda. There has to be a recognition of the failure there, and it needs to be discussed. Uh, do you, yeah. Uh, 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 you, 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 you guys can go. You guys can go by. You guys can go by. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. We'll just keep going. Um, so, uh, do you? So, uh, you talked about this, some of these discussions that are happening. Are you having these discussions for another candidate to challenge him tomorrow? I, I don't know anything about the other candidate. I just heard the rumors like other people have. I think I've seen it on, on social media, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know anything about that. But what I want to see is the discussions in our conference of we need to recognize the things that uh, went wrong and that voters do not want to see us replicate. I, I, what I want to hear from my conference is they realize the policy and agenda that the American people want and that they're fired up and ready to hand it to them. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm, I'm, I want to hear, and, and hopefully I'm going to hear that. So it sounds like from basically what you're saying is that you, know, you obviously pushed to oust him in this Congress, but you're open to supporting him in the new Congress. Is that fair? Yes, I'm open 
but I want to hear these discussions. This is what I'm looking forward to hearing, hopefully from our leadership. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's important, anytime you fail, no matter who you are, anytime there's failure, you have to look at where you failed, um, why you failed, and change course. And so I'm hoping House Republicans, um, especially coming from leadership on down, are, are able to recognize, you know what? We voted, funded, and passed things the American people do not support. They made a mandate on Tuesday, and it's President Trump's agenda, and I want to see them say they're ready to go for that. Uh, and have you spoken to President Trump about any of this, the leadership race and the like? I haven't spoken to him specifically on uh, leadership race. I have spoken to him. I was there on Tuesday, and I've spoken with him since then. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're busy at work, of course, working on um, transition, cabinet mm -hmm. appointments, staffing. I mean, it's a massive amount of people that you have to work through. And one of the things he said on the campaign trail repeatedly is that he's going to pardon to all the January 6th defendants. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to him about that, and what do you expect that he'll do there? Absolutely. Um, I think January 6th defendants should be pardoned. I Absolutely, think, you've talked to him? Uh, in the past, I have. I haven't mm -hmm. talked to him in the past week mm -hmm. on it, mm -hmm. but yes. This is something that I've spoken with him a lot on. He said it openly on the campaign trail. He will pardon January 6th. Uh, defendants. Antifa, over 95% of them were never prosecuted. Uh, BLM writers were bailed out of jail thanks to Kamala Harris and Ilhan Omar and others. Um, and they weren't prosecuted. January 6th defendants definitely should be should be uh, pardoned. Do you think you should pardon all of them? Uh, I certainly hope so. I think they should all be pardoned. There are They've been serving, many of them have been serving uh, time in prison even before they were uh, found guilty of these many, a lot of these are ridiculous charges. But even the severity of the charges, you think that all of them should be? Well, yeah. let's let's go through this. They didn't kill anybody. The only people that were killed were Ashley Babbitt and a few other uh, protesters there that day. Um, they didn't rape anybody. They, they didn't kill anyone. They didn't kill Lake and Riley. They didn't kill any other Americans like all these illegals that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris led in the country. Um, they didn't sell fentanyl across the country. They, they came in protesting the election, and, and some of them caused damage to the Capitol. Some of them fought Capitol Police. That's exactly what Antifa and BLM riders did every single night in 2020. It's time to pardon these people. The federal government was politically weaponized against them. Um, it, again, it's a, it's a complete uh, political bias to prosecute January 6th, January 6th uh, protesters and rioters, but never go after Antifa and BLM. Um, okay. Um, anything else about your, you can shine light on your conversations with Trump since election day? Um, we, uh, we discussed ending the war in Ukraine. That's very important. Mm -hmm. That's important across the country. Um, that's a war that, that should have never happened. Uh, and many of us argue that Russia would have never invaded Ukraine had President Trump been in the White House. Um, and Did he say how, it, how that would happen? Would you know, Ukraine have to essentially, how, how do you think that would be executed by President Trump? I, I'm not at liberty to give those details, and I won't speak for President Trump, um, but, but this war will end, and we should not fund it anymore. And that's something else happening in December. Uh, there should be no more funding for Ukraine. Hmm. Are you going to go to the administration? I, I, hmm. I, I think I'm very happily going to serve the people in Georgia's 14th district, and I'm honored to do so. All right. I appreciate the time. Yeah, Thanks for talking. You, yeah, you sure. Yep. All right. Thank All right. You. See you. See you later. All right. We'll yeah. see you.